Kenny O'Neill, great to meet you. Okay. Such an honor. So where should we start with the, uh, the, the the lower income? How do we look at this? Well, here's the very first thing I want to start off, Ryan, is the number one wealth building tool you have is your income. And right now, all of us across America, we are feeling the hit of this pandemic. And so I'm here today just to really give some practical advice on how to adapt, adjust, and overcome. Because some of us are struggling, some of us are hurt, some of us are depressed, but we're going to get through it together. Where should we start? The number one thing you got to start with is having a vision, a.k.a. a budget for your money. Mm -hmm. So how do we have a budget for our money? It's three simple steps. Number one, it's called a zero-based budget. So you're going to list all of your income. This is going to be your job, your child support, your alimony, your discipline check. Not discipline, but you know all the income you have coming in. Right. Then you list all of your expenses. So I knew you had some pretty dope shoes, so I had to go add to my budget some real nice shoes as well. So what you cut? <laughs> but there's always a trend. you got to cut something out. Hey, man, you're right, you're right. But I had to list all of my expenses. So whatever you are, whatever you're doing, from Apple Music to your hair, you name it, you list that. Then at the end of it, it should equal zero, okay? okay? Income minus your expenses should equal zero. If you have $20 left over, for example, you need to go back and spend that on paper before the month begins. It's very crucial to make sure you have a clear budget moving forward this year. And you recommend living below your means? Absolutely. Now, when I say living below your means, I want you to live poor and act poor. What I want you to do is realize that the difference between looking like you have a lot of money and actually having a lot of money. And so when it comes to living below your means, what I want you to do is just sit down, look at your budget, see what you can cut, and just because you have it doesn't mean you need to spend it, okay? When it comes to building true wealth, we build true wealth by margin, not by having a large income. It's about how much money do you have left over. Mm -hmm. And you do that by just living below your means. What about unnecessary expenses that add up? Should we go back and look at some of those things and cut them out? <laughs> and what, what, are the, what are those things? <laughs> Streaming services, things like that? Yeah, but you know what? You know what, for me, can I just be real on your show? Absolutely. It's about uh, time we get real. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be real, man, for me, as a single brother, I had to go out and cut off some of these expensive ladies I was dating last year. <laughs> so, so you're single and you're not dating. Yeah, that saves you money. Hey, man, listen, so what I do is cut that out. But all seriousness, yes, cut out some, some of your Netflix, uh, come out some of your music uh, apps, and just really find things you can really cut off. Well, with that last comment, Kelly would like to come in and take over. <laughs> guarantee you that. She's chopping at the bit. We'll be right back with Anthony. More tips on how to save money. We'll see you later. No, no, no. adjusting to lower income, do you have advice on earning extra cash? A lot of people either lost jobs or were furloughed, had to take pay cuts. Yeah. How, how do you supplement? I want to start off by this, Kelly, is by really setting the stage. Money flows two ways. So it flows in and it flows out. And a lot of people are stressing over both of them right now. Mm -hmm. So here's what I want them to focus on right now. Focus on your, uh, focus on your food, your utilities, your housing, and your transportation. Now, how do we do that? We may have to do something that we may not like doing so we can get back to covering these four walls and also getting back to what, doing what we love to do. So what kind of jobs would you say that you would suggest to, let's say there's a single mom, yeah. she is stressed yeah. to the max, and she's just, you know, she can't make she can't make ends meet. What's available to somebody like that? Here's the first thing, very first thing I would say for a single mother. Find some time with, to where maybe you can go do grocery shopping for people, like an Instacart. For a single brother like myself who ain't married, you trying to tell me I don't have to go to the grocery store and be around some annoying people? Absolutely. Instacart is a great way because I'm even tipping them very well because they're doing all the hard work. And then on top of that, I've been here for a week. I've been in New York because I really wanted to come on here and meet you. I wasn't really worried about Ryan. I just really wanted to meet you. Here's the uh, thing. I've already <laughs> spoken for Ryan already asked today. But you know, while I, was, while I was waiting to meet both of you all, I was in a hotel for a week. And I'm telling you right now, DoorDash and Uber Eats made a lot of money off of me. So that's another great side job to really pick up on. So those are things like you have to get creative and just figure yeah. out like a, a, you know, a side hustle in some way that's yeah. like 
works for your family. Absolutely. And another great side hustle for all like the college grads who just yes. graduated who are smart, yo, go online and tutor some kids. There are a lot of kids sitting at home and parents are getting upset because they're not as smart as you. And so you can go in there and make two to three hundred dollars an hour just by tutoring some young people. That is that is true. Um, you can go to KellyandRyan.com for all of these tips and check out the table with Anthony O'Neill. It's available everywhere. You can download podcasts. Uh, you, it's on YouTube, and uh, we'll be right back. Stick around.